Hello everyone, welcome to KFC. Today we're gonna be talking about chicken. Now when we think of chicken movies, there are the two titans when it comes to the chicken movie genre. Of course we have Chicken Little and then Chicken Run. And unfortunately it looks like the majority of you on my Instagram believe that Chicken Little is the king of chicken movies. And I'm here to tell you that you're wrong, you're stupid, and your hair is bad. Okay, maybe that last one was a little bit unnecessary. But today we are going to talk about Chicken Run because I am tired of all these lies of this movie. I'm going to stand up for what is right. Spit the truth. Chicken Run is a goddamn masterpiece and I'm tired of everyone sleeping on it. Wait a second. It's the highest grossing stop motion film of all time. But how? How is this possible? No one ever talks about this movie. So Chicken Run, yes, a movie made back in 2000 that we all believe was just a simple plot line, a nice little kids film with some funny jokes, with some cool stop motion animation, and that's it. Right? Well, after watching it as an adult, there are so many messages in this movie. A lot political, too. Messages of the dark side of capitalism, misogyny, feminism, animal cruelty, class warfare, global diplomacy, and more are all even relevant to what we are dealing with in today's times. I know, all of you are probably confused. How is this simple little plot with some funny jokes have all of these undertones? Well, baby, there's a lot. Something I give credit to this movie is the fact that it was made in 2000. Do you know how many movies made in the 2000s are very, very problematic in today's times? Honestly, you could tell me that this movie was made today and I would believe you. And not to mention the amazing stop motion animation this is a 2000s movie and the visuals are just and not only that but the music in this movie is good so goddamn good that it potentially inspired Hans Zimmer in the creation of the Pirates of the Caribbean score and not only that but it has a fantastic antagonist who can be compared to today's world and how capitalism can corrupt people but also the idea of a trad wife and how it's extremely toxic and extremely depressing and can lead to self-destruction and also we have a great protagonist who only wants to get freedom to live free and there's so many references to early feminist movements and her entire goal is to escape this hellhole that we can plainly see is set up similar to that of a prison and some could even say similar to that of a concentration camp but um I don't know if we want to go down that dark route do we and just like every 2000s movie that ever existed it also has a spin-off video game which I would just like to mention I probably am currently playing that spin-off video game right now on Twitch. And don't get me wrong, I know you're just dying to go over there to see the riveting gameplay of Chicken Run the game, but finish the video first, then you can go over there, okay? Don't leave me. But before we start dissecting this film, let me have a little bit of a sip of my coffee. Coffee? Did you say coffee? Oh my God, it's Coffee Chris. Hey, big word on the streets, you're looking for a nice fresh cup of coffee. Boy, am I. Well, here, let me get you some. Yeah, let me get you some right in there. Ugh. Oh! Ugh. Oh! 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 Thanks. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, drink that. Come on, come on, drink it. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. Why, of course, Coffee Chris is always here to give you coffee, you understand? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you. Now you listen here, all right? You drink another man's coffee and not Coffee Chris's sweet black nectar. You're telling me something. You better be sleeping with your eyes open, boy. Uh, uh oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Now you enjoy that coffee now, you hear? You enjoy that coffee, boy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm watching. Is he gone? Are you tired of Coffee Chris making you drink out of his coffee udders? Spice up your coffee life and find a new fresh coffee with Trade. Trade is the easiest way to find new coffees shipped right to your door. With Trade, you can discover new coffees from the best local roasters in the nation. All you need to do is take the quiz, find out what type of coffee drinker you are, then choose the frequency of your delivery, and boom, bam, you got fresh coffee shipped right to your freaking door, baby. 
then you rate the coffee and then you repeat. Trade sends you new coffees to make sure it fits your perfect taste. Me personally, after trying good quality fresh roasted beans from Trade, I have completely weaned myself away from Chris Coffee's udders. And as someone personally who is learning how to roast coffee beans and also will be probably selling his own type of coffee beans in the future, wink, wink, it feels really good supporting local roasters. Not only that, but the coffee is roasted and shipped within 24 hours of your order. Trade guarantees you will love your first coffee or they'll send you a new bag for free. And you can get your first bag of coffee for free if you click that link in the description, go to Trade Coffee, take the quiz, boom, bam, you get your free bag of coffee. We got car right oh, in. No, 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 I, I love your coffee, coffee, Chris. Coffee. I love right, drinking your utter coffee. Yeah. I just want to mention before we get into this movie, this movie was heavily inspired by The Great Escape, an older movie, and I just want to mention I did not watch The Great Escape. I have never watched it, so I do not know the comparisons, but I just saw many articles and many different things saying it was inspired by that movie, so I felt inclined to mention that. So how the movie starts is kind of a montage of the main character, Ginger, voiced by Julia Swalaha. I hope I'm saying that right. So we go through a montage of Ginger doing a bunch of different things to try to escape, and when she gets caught trying to escape, she basically gets put in like a... a hell hole i don't I, I forget what you call them they're like those things that you do to punish prisoners and like really aggressive violent prisons where you put them in a hole in like a very hot area and they just starve and thirst for for weeks it's a reference to that i don't remember what it's called but it's dark but no matter how many times ginger gets caught she perseveres and keeps going comes up with new plans every single time ways that they can get out of there and it is funny how they set up this chicken coop because they literally have guard towers they literally have bar Barbed wired fences at the top to where it literally just looks like a prison or once again someone could compare it to a concentration camp. So after the last attempt before the title screen we learn that this is Tweedy's farm and this is Mr. Tweedy and then his wife is Mrs. Tweedy obviously. So then we're introduced to Mrs. Tweedy by all the chickens lining up and Mrs. Tweedy walking around and they just think it's just a regular counting session where she just counts how many eggs they have. They're all good. They move on with their day. But we start to realize that Mrs. Tweedy ain't so nice as she looks which I mean she doesn't really Really looked that nice either but you know what i mean and we see mrs tweedy look at a clipboard and see that this chicken in particular hasn't laid any eggs in a long time and so her solution which most farm solution is is offing the chicken which she does she takes a chicken to her little shed puts the chicken's neck on a piece of wood and does a little chop and we obviously don't see it but we just hear the chop and obviously we can assume that the chicken is dead so we get a pretty good idea of how dangerous this environment is for these chickens that if they don't hit their quota of eggs then that means they're dead and obviously in context of the movie this is extremely cruel and awful but in terms of how the world works it really is pretty normalized. If you put a face and uh, personality traits onto a chicken and you get a little bit attached to these chickens and think of them as humanoids, that's when it starts getting a little bit depressing. So you can start to see the parallels between animal cruelty in this movie. So then we cut to the scene of completely full-on eaten chicken. All you see is the rib bones of what the chicken was before it was on the chopping block. Then we see Mrs. Tweedy going through profits and typing in a bunch of numbers and you start to realize that they're on a decline of their profits in this farm. And this is something you don't really notice a lot in this movie unless you really look into it. But Mrs. Tweedy and Mr. Tweedy are not actually, you know, what you would call a good marriage. Because Mrs. Tweedy does what every uh, traditional wife technically would do and marry what they think would be rich. Because Mr. Tweedy was actually handed down the farm from his father, his grandfather, etc. It's been a farm that's been producing a buttload of money for a long time. So she thought that she would marry rich. And it turns out that, you know, life ain't turning out like she wanted to because Miss Tweety like a lot of people are taught that being rich and having a buttload of money regardless of how you do it will make you happy and the only smile we ever see of Miss Tweety is when she looks at this little magazine and it's a giant chicken pie maker and right next to it you see a dude holding a bag of money saying I'm rich and then we get a shot of her smiling really big so obviously she believes her form of freedom or her form of happiness is just being really rich but then we get the protagonist Ginger on the other hand her form of happiness is just being free and out of this prison so they kind of both want the same thing they just want happiness they just want that freedom but they both 
both have a different version of what that freedom is. And there's plenty of signs where you can tell their marriage isn't really a good one. Miss Tweety constantly refers to him as Mr. Tweety, never really refers to him by his first name. She kind of just bosses him around for her own selfish reasons because Mr. Tweety isn't really that smart and she kind of is just taking advantage of the whole situation. Miss Tweety is just greedy and evil, but it's in context of how the world wants her to be. She feels like she needs to be rich in order to be happy. So Ginger's starting to feel like all hope is lost and that she'll never be able to get out of here because they're running out of ideas and even the other chickens are like saying that your ideas are hurting us more than they're helping us. And then all of a sudden, Rocky, unfortunately, uh, voiced by Mel Gibson, that kind of sucks, flies from the sky over top of them and then lands inside of their pen and the flyer falls down from him and it shows him flying through the sky instantly ginger and everyone else believes that he's just a rooster who can fly and so ginger asked him if he could teach everyone how to fly so they could fly out of here obviously not realizing that he really can't fly and right off the bat every single chicken is just oogling over this dude who fell out of the sky believing that this random dude who just fell out of the sky is going to solve every single one of their problems and then they all find out that he's from america and then fowler the old man kind of makes a few jabs at America, which I thought was kind of funny. Pushy Americans, always showing up late for every war, overpaid, oversexed, and over here. Hey, what's eating Grandpa? So obviously Rocky kind of sucking in all of this attention. He really loves it. So he's kind of leaning into the idea that he can fly and he is this crazy cool icon. So he's already forming a terrible lie that obviously is going to bite him in the ass later on. It's ironic that Mel Gibson of all people voices literally one of the worst characters in this movie, or at least the most unlikable, I should say. Because right off the bat, after sucking in all that attention, he's like, yep, I'm leaving, sorry, and just starts walking away. Even though Ginger's telling him, yo, if we don't get our shit together and get out, we are all gonna die. He's like, up, oh, tough luck, that's life, and just kind of leaves. And the only way she got him to stay is the circus came over because apparently the rooster Rocky is from the circus and they're looking for Rocky. So he begged her to hide him. So they made a deal. If he teaches them how to fly, then she'll hide him and make sure that he doesn't find him. So we have a big lie in place that's going to make everything fall apart. So the first day of training, he kind of just pulls some stuff out of his ass and starts making him do these weird stretches, makes him spin around. Basically just throwing out random stuff just to hold up as part of the deal, even though he is fully aware that it won't get them anywhere and it'll never help them at all. And a reoccurring joke that goes throughout the movie is that Mr. Tweety sees all the chickens doing these things, like these, these humanoid things here and there. And obviously Mrs. Tweety doesn't see it, but Mr. Tweety does, and she obviously just thinks he's completely crazy. But it's just a funny thing that happens throughout the movie, because Mr. Tweety just isn't that bright of a guy. So the next thing that happens is a giant truck comes in and brings a buttload of boxes, and then we hear Mrs. Tweety say that she is not going to be poor anymore. Again, the only thing that's on her mind is just making more money. And Rocky, literally the only thing he's doing is making things worse because he's keeping them thinking that they're going to learn how to fly by doing all this training but it, it really is not helping anyone at all it's honestly just making things way worse and ginger's starting to realize this a little bit more too just the whole idea that just because a random guy fell from the sky doesn't mean that he's going to solve everyone's problem and sometimes it's up to you to solve the problem yourself instead of relying on this random guy that fell out of the sky the only good thing that rocky does throughout the entire movie is throw a little party for all of them just to make them feel a little bit better about the fact that they're probably going to die a horrendous death pretty soon. I guess that's something good. I mean, it brought their morale up a bit. That's something. So Mr. Tweety somehow builds this massive chicken pie conveyor belt machine that, you know, takes chickens, makes them into chicken pie. Then Mrs. Tweety mentions that everyone in town is going to be eating Mrs. Tweety's famous pies. And then she mentions everyone likes a woman's touch on it, like a woman's trad wife type face on the image holding a pie because it makes the public feel more safe. So Miss Tweety tells Mr. Tweety to go grab a chicken and run the chicken pie machine. And obviously the first one he grabs is Ginger because he has a little bit of a vendetta against her because of how many times she's tried to escape. So Rocky realizes that Ginger is going to get mad mangled and turned into a chicken pie so he goes in the machine to save her. And right before they are baked alive, yes, 
in a giant oven. We could definitely make another uh, Holocaust reference here, but we're not. So they somehow make it out alive by shoving a carrot inside the gravy little spout and overloading the machine, and then they have to fix it. So it buys them a little bit of time to figure out what the hell they're supposed to do to get out of here. And then it's starting to hit Rocky pretty hard that he's kind of fucked up, you know, making him believe all this shit and giving them this false hope, believing that they'll be able to fly out of here when they won't. Even the old man commends him and says, great job at saving Ginger from that machine. Machine. And then, just like most men do, when things get tough, it's time to get going. Because he literally just leaves. Things are getting too tough. People are starting to believe in him too much. Time to just fucking yeet out of there, bro. <laughs> with a nice little note on the bed being like, yo, sorry, this shit's getting too hard, bruh. And obviously this could be a reference to literally many dads, because let's be real, that's like a common thing that happens is dads, when things get hard for a lot of dads, they just kind of just skedaddle out of there, you know? So Rocky leaves behind the rest of the poster and everyone sees that Rocky isn't actually a flying rooster, he just gets shot out of a cannon, so it made it look like he was a flying rooster when he wasn't. And so since he left, everyone starting in a panic, chaos, is starting to ensue everyone's starting to fight with each other shit's going down and then ginger being the badass girl that she is stands up and she's like yo we don't need no man to handle our shit we're gonna do it ourselves just like i said before a flying dude coming out of nowhere just because he's a guy ain't gonna solve anyone else's problems you know sometimes you gotta do it yourself and so no joke they literally make an entire goddamn ship out of wood a flying vehicle out of wood. So they end up beating the machine of them fixing it and ended up building that entire plane basically and try to fly out of there before Mrs. Tweety catches him. But unfortunately, Mrs. Tweety was there to knock down the ramp. So as they're about to fly off and take off on the ramp, Mr. Tweety got over there and knocked down the ramp and they have a little problem here because Miss Tweety is coming out with an ax. Not only that, but Rocky ends up riding his bike over top of the fence and helping Ginger lift up the ramp just in time for them to fly out of there. And then we see Mrs. Tweety at her lowest point, completely self-destructed and her life basically falling apart. And there's a really good scene right here where they run through Mrs. Tweety's poster of her, you know, being the poster woman with the smiling face. And then she rips off that face showing how utterly destroyed her life is capitalism am i right so all of the chickens and rocky and the other rooster make it out alive and they end up setting up camp in the middle of nowhere and their life is happy and they're free and obviously mrs tweety and mr tweety are, their lives are a little bit in shambles now aren't they i mean the chicken farm that they were selling eggs is now all completely gone all that money they spent on that giant machine is completely wasted because now they have no chickens to even make chicken pie and i guess you could say there was another like feministic reference to how uh, a lot of media and movies portray that women in power can't control the power and end up just going crazy which is exactly what mrs tweety did and there's a lot in this movie to dissect and to take apart obviously i kind of just glazed over a lot because let's be real there's too much to get into and also i don't want to get extremely political with all of this stuff i kind of just wanted to talk about how interesting it was and all the references they made in this movie and all the things they were trying to symbolize and it was just for a 2000s movie honestly it's really good and once again i'll say it again people be sleeping on chicken run it's a good ass movie okay go watch it again you'll be surprised but thank you everyone for watching this video but before you guys go please go watch me play chicken run the game i'm currently streaming on twitch.tv slash bionic pig tv when i upload this by the way obviously like two years in the future when this video is still up i probably won't be streaming at this time but when i upload this video i will be streaming that's how time works i know how time works thanks guys bye